this has been a long time coming. How does it feel to finally have this new album out for the world oh, to well, hear? It, it feels great to be out here and to get a chance to, uh, you know, get back on the road because all the music had left me for a while. So I'm just glad to be back out. Get my, that's my joy. Music is my joy and my happiness. You look great. You seem in fine spirits. How you doing? Oh, I'm much stronger today than I was four days ago. Each day I'm getting stronger and stronger the more the, the chemo gets out of my system. It's literally day to day. Yes, it is. It took me back to the moment when things started to change for you, uh, Sharon. You were on stage performing a gig in, in Boise, Idaho. What, what happened that night? Uh, hit a note. And I felt like this pain in my back, like uh, somebody just really punched me. And I doubled over, and I'm thinking it was like, you know, muscle spasms, you know, in the road sitting up. But um, when the doctor asked the question and I explained it to her, she said that was at the time the pancreas and stuff going out then. I didn't know it. And 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 how did you react when you heard the diagnosis was cancer? I first when they told me it was bile duct cancer and it was simple and I was like, ah, no chemo, no radiation, nah. You know, so I figured yeah, a few months, maybe four months, you know, I'd be out. But then when the doctor went inside, they gave me the Whipple. And once the Whipple procedure, they removed certain things like the gallbladder, the head of my pancreas, a foot and a half of my small intestines, built a bowel duct connected to my stomach. Once he went in, the pancreas took the head out. He noticed that the cancer had spread it to the lymph nodes. And that's when I was diagnosed with the pancreatic cancer, which I thought I wouldn't be here to perform this album because I thought, you know, that was it. You know, people just be buying the album, but I wouldn't perform this this album. That was that was for a few days once he told me I had it. But then once things started changing, he guaranteed it quite sure they had, they got all the uh, cancer. It must have been terrifying. Yeah. It is terrifying. I still have to go in um the twenty third Thursday for the another CAT scan. They put the dye just to make sure all the cancer is gone. I mean, after you had time to process your feelings on a personal level, what what went through your mind in regard to how cancer might affect your creative self? Oh, I, well, the main, main thing is getting back out here, the energy that I have. I don't know how long it's going to take to, you know, me to get my strength back, my blood cells to build back up. Because that's why I'm weak, because of the blood cells building up. And that's my thing, just getting my energy back. I'm just a little nervous of these first shows because everyone is so used to seeing me you know, you're you're the energizer bunny yeah. of of, of, yeah. of I like of, saying of I just, I'm like that little bunny. <laughs> you are. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing watching. I've seen you guys a few times. But uh, did did doctors tell you not to do this? Or did no, we we got I got the okay from the doctor before I even decided to come out. Because other than that, I would have just stayed in. He just told me to take my time and fill it out. Yeah, go easy. And the yourself. band is they know and all to tell my fans, you know, just bear with me. The music does the talking. Yes, you don't it need does. to do, you don't need to be jumping around but but it, and it doesn't hurt to sing out the way you do or anything oh, like no, that. Oh no, not now. Well, it, at first it it did because the way they cut me, like it cut across the diaphragm, they, you know, and I couldn't even stand up for a while from like June to September was before I was even able to straighten up, you know, and um, flex that muscle in there. But it's okay once I was able to um Get the air through there, push that diaphragm up and down. I'm, I'm okay. I understand that while you were on undergoing treatment, your relationship to music itself changed. How, yes. How it, so? It just when I was sick, I just didn't listen to music. I didn't listen to anything. See, that amazes me because I, I, I thought music would, would soothe me and yeah, make me. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, tell, see, tell. music soothes me and, and makes me better when I'm on the stage, when I'm singing it. But when you're sick, you know, how can I sing it? And I couldn't even. Get, you know, inhale a certain uh, length of air without, you know, filling. So I just didn't have the joy, you know, so I, I didn't want to hear any music. When did you know it was okay to hear music again? Uh, when they start telling me we gotta, <laughs> we got to get ready for it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for work? <laughs> when gotta, we got to get ready for work. Um, no, it came to the time that we wanted to do the, um, to make do the um, Stranger to My Happiness um, video. And and right then and now, like, you didn't listen to music until then. Yeah, like right before, like October. Like I really got into music like October. Wow. Because we had a rehearsal, so I listened to a couple of songs, so I get it now. You know, I remember when the news came out. Um, I think I talked about it on the air here. We were all really worried about you, and uh, but part of it is you you went public about your your illness. You could have quietly postponed the album and tours and taken time away. Tell me why it was important to tell people what you were going through. Because I always used the audience, my fans. You know, when I get on stage, you know, that's what me and the Dab Kings, you know, the whole band, it's all about feeding off the energy, you know. So the audience feed off our energy, and you know, I'm feeding off the band, so we all just feed, you know. So me being sick and not being able to talk about myself 
and I wanted to go on Facebook and like once the hair came out and put a picture up, how can I go in there and put a picture on I'm bald and hmm. and they're like, What happened? You know, she they didn't say she had to take chemo. And I just got to the point I like, you know, I really want to talk to my fans about what I'm going through because I have to. And once I got the message from them, like all the blessings and so much positive energy coming and it just sort of so it gave me that strength. Gives you strength. Get out that bed. That's 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 beautiful. I mean, it's 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 a partnership between yeah. you and your and your audience. Right. That's that's important. Give the people what they want. This was three years in the making, so it, it preceded your diagnosis. Has your relationship to the songs changed now that you're on the other side of well, the illness? Well, a couple of them, and I guess once more we get on stage and probably perform it, and I get more of the stories in my head. There's still about three songs I still got to get down in my head, and I'm still struggling here. You little. What does that mean? Get down in your head. Learn them, get the lyrics, get the story, be able to tell that story without like what? looking at the band like a <laughs> like a, a deer getting ready to get hit by a car. Right. You know, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure this will come as some comfort to the band that you don't know three of the songs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they know the deal. They they're not worried. <laughs> they can just play. It <laughs> they, doesn't they matter. They can just play. It. That's right. Uh, 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 what about on a personal level? What can you say about the biggest changes you you you've seen in yourself? I mean, I, or have you? Well, I yeah. Well, only thing in myself is just that I just learn that life is like short you know you can you know you can go anytime and I just learned also that you need to pay attention to your body you know everyone out here your body gives you signs when something is wrong you know don't ignore it you know and and also I just learned that life is short and we just need to love what you do and love yourself so how do you put that into practice each day I mean learning that life is short what does that what, what, how does, what does that mean in terms to me of like I always had a thing whenever I get on the stage each time I perform, that could be my last night. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to give you everything I got that night because tomorrow not promised. Mm. You know, but I know it is going to be promised, but I just feel yeah. that way. You give it all because you never know when it's your last time. Well, don't give us everything while you're recovering. Okay, we, need you to, we need you to on. recover, too. I will be holding back. Uh, one, <laughs> one thing that hasn't changed at all is your devotion to keeping soul music alive. You, you said that your goal now is to make the music industry recognize soul. soul. That's right. Why don't you think soul music gets the recognition it deserves? It all depends on, you know, just hip-hop, pop, the major labels, uh, um, they're in control. You know, what's selling, what's making the money is what's making the money. I don't think... You know, they look at me and say, what can she do? Can she bring us some money? Give me a chance and put us out there and see what happened. But major labels not going to get a hold. You know, we're who we are. And I think a lot of the soul music groups that's trying to portray themselves are independent. You know, and so... So even after the the Amy Winehouse and all of that sort of revolution that came of a new wave of soul, uh, you, you don't think it, it gets the, the respect or attention it deserves? No, it's not. Because what they're calling... R&B, they, they're not even saying soul. What they call an R&B and funk is pop, mm -hmm. you know. And my my way is pop because mm -hmm. I, I, I watched the music change over the years. You know, I grew up with it. You know, I watched the Jackson 5 turn from a soul group to pop, you know. So watched all this stuff happen. And and now the pop is it and, and it sells. If you look, what do you see on, on, on the TV? Right. You see boobs. You see thighs. You see tongues hanging out of people's mouths. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> well, you got and some you of see, that in soul and music, and too. And you see naked yeah. behinds all up in your face. Right. So, yeah. Oh, well, what is I mean, it's, you don't, these things are not easy to put into words necessarily, but what is, what is it that people lose if they're not fulfilling their lives with soul music? What is it that soul music has that you're so seduced by since you were a kid? Soul music is the backbone. I mean, every rap around here is rapping because of some soul music that they heard, something they sampled, and, you know, and they saw, yeah, hey, you got an old song in the background. And I think that's, the, like, the the backbone. And as for me, it's what I can sing. You know, I don't want to be a pop singer. I don't want to get up. And, I can't even do that, whatever they do with their voices. What you were know? you trying? Well, what, I don't know, but whatever they do, I can't do it. What do you mean you can't do it? <laughs> you got an do. incredible voice. <laughs> they, you can probably they, do they anything you want. Like any, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't understand how they sing like that. I don't know what you were doing. That sounded <laughs> I horrible. I don't know what yeah. I'm doing either. <laughs> uh, what, what is the plan now? for the? How far ahead are you planning things in terms of what you guys do with this record? I, I've learned, you know, Laying in that bed, you take things one day at a time. And I think with the Dab King is I, all they just waiting for me to get on the stage and they just going to watch me. And if I like, I got to walk up the stage, I'll walk up the stage and they'll keep going. I, I, I know they have my back. So that's my thing is just to get out here. We have these dates 
and I want to do every date. I don't want to go do one or two shows and then have to cancel three or four, mm-hmm. you know, so I just want to do every. And how day. far ahead are you as, as, as the tour plan? Um, as far as it's going to go, that's where I'm, my head All is. Right. I mean, I'm just, right. just ready. I'm going to take it one day at a time. Uh, it is such a joy to have oh, you here. Thank you. You're looking great. And, and, and it's, I mean, to have the whole band here, thank you so much for doing this.